Hi, I'm Rob Champa. I'm here with Mike Volpe, Chief Marketing Officer for HubSpot, one of our neighbors here in, in Cambridge, and one of the pioneers in the inbound marketing revolution. So we're going to talk with Mike a little bit about inbound marketing. We're going to talk about their techniques that they're using, and we'll go into a little more you know, detail in some other areas. So Mike, it's great to uh, have you here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Very excited. Okay, so tell us a bit about you know, HubSpot and the whole inbound marketing. Yeah, so inbound marketing is about attracting people to your company uh, through blogging, through social media, all the ways that people communicate today and all the ways that they uh, you know, shop for and learn about products today. Um, rather than cold calling people, which people don't want to receive, you know, rather than sending them direct mail, which gets thrown out, all, all these older marketing techniques. So it's about adapting your marketing to attract people to your business using the tools that most people are using today. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. One of the things with my previous marketing teams, um, I train them in HubSpot. So a lot of classical marketers over the years, what they end up doing is it's the same thing as Mike mentioned before. You know, people call out, do the same old things, and it was really, it was a change in mindset. So, I can't imagine that inbound marketing is a static thing. Now, you've been at this for four years, yeah. and there's an evolution. So, you know, where's it come from, and, and where's it going? What's, what's next in inbound? That's a great question. Uh, you know, again, I think the philosophy is, uh, hasn't changed much over time, but the tools and the things that you have available to you to implement that philosophy have definitely changed. Uh, when, you know, when I started HubSpot, Twitter didn't exist. Uh, no one was using Twitter. Uh, and now, you know, it's kind of a big deal. Um, you know, Facebook was much smaller. Google Plus didn't exist. So a lot of these social channels have changed. Um, certainly the prevalence of video, I think, has increased a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, people are getting more and more familiar with not only watching video, but also creating video. Things like, you know, Skype and FaceTime and other technologies. Right. I think you're getting people more familiar with it, too. So. I don't know what's next. Um, you know, if someone knows, please let me know because I would love to know what's next. But I think our job as marketers is to stay on the pulse of what's happening and always try to incorporate these new technologies right. and experiment with them and, and see what you can do with the new things. Yeah. And what's interesting about you guys is every time, whatever is next, you guys are usually on it right away. Yeah. So there was, um, we're marketing guys, we're marketing executives. And yeah, I was at an event um, discussing the book Groundswell. Mm -hmm. And we had we had thirty marketers in the room, yeah. and uh, we started you know talking about social media. And the discussion went over to inbound marketing, and a lot of people were like the proverbial deer in the headlights, and they went silent. Most of the room was actually silent, and these weren't stupid people. Right. These were smart people, yeah. and they were marketers. What do we do? What's we, there seems to be a gap between classical and inbound. What's your take? I, I think you're right, and there's a lot of people that are scared. Um, and I think they're scared because they feel like a lot of the skills that they've learned over the past 5, 10, 15 years are becoming less and less relevant. Um, and they're right. Um, now, the great news is you can learn the new skills. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's We talk a lot about the types of things that you want to hire in terms of your marketing staff today. And one of them is that you want to hire people that speak digital you know, fluently without an accent. Right. Uh, and that either means you're born into the digital nation that we all live in today, or you can emigrate there. Like you and I have emigrated there. You know, the internet was not a big deal when we were in high school <laughs> and growing up. Uh, but we figured out how to speak digital without an accent. Uh, and so when we're walking down the street and we're doing things on Twitter or on our blog, people don't look at us and say, well, you don't really understand this. Like we, we live it and we get it. Uh, so it is possible to sort of adapt yourself to this new world. Uh, but it's not easy. And you're right. A lot of marketers are scared about scared by it. Yeah, I like that speaking digital without an accent. It's, I think the challenge, and you know, a lot of people come to, you know, probably like you, they'll come to me and say, okay, how do I get started in a blog? Yeah. And there's a level of discomfort that they yeah. have to get through. Well, I think people are used to controlling the message and having everything be sort of pre-screened and pre-processed and not um, getting in a re reaction to the things that they send out. You know, so you do a television ad, there's no way to comment on the television right, ad. Right. You know, people don't send you all this feedback, you know, typically. Uh, but today, you know, your blog article has comments, your social media, you know, posts have, you know, comments and other people can share them or not share them and things like that. And it's, you're definitely opening yourself up a lot more, which for pe some people can be scary, but that's the way the world works today. And to be an effective marketer, you have to really embrace that and not, yep, be, that, not be scared of it. That, that, that's a great point. So I mentioned that HubSpot is across Cambridge. and. On Friday afternoons, yeah. 
Uh, can, I'm going to let the secret out of the bat. I don't think it's a secret. It's not a secret. Hub, you know, what used to be HubSpot TV is now Marketing Update. It's a phenomenal event in town, and they, they open it up for folks, and it's, it's, it's a blast. There are free drinks as well, <laughs> and it's a lot of fun. So you guys have been doing this. You've done 150-plus episodes. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just curious. Why did you get started with it? How do you keep it fresh, and why video? Yeah, great question. Um, I'll start with the why video first, which is that I think video is one of the most uh, dynamic and engaging formats of content that you can create. And so as long as you're not scared about being in front of a camera or, you know, because video can be, I think, a little scary for some people, uh, but I think video can be a phenomenal way to connect with folks. And we like to take things, I mean, just like this video that we're doing right now, we like to, to find ways to take the personalities from within our company and showcase them and share a lot of our expertise and our thought leadership through formats like video. So those are some of the reasons about why video. Uh, we started it because uh, it was three years ago and a lot of the, the people, streaming and doing, being able to do live streaming was sort of just, uh, it wasn't brand new at the time, but it was starting to sort of hit the mainstream and the quality was getting there. And we, we always look at, like you said, we, looked at, we always look at new things and say, well, what can we do with these new technologies that are coming out? And we wanted to do something with live streaming. So that was really where it started. And, that, and it was just an idea of like, well, what can we live stream? And we said, well, why don't we do a show? And clearly, if it's going to be a show that's targeted to our audience, it has something to do with marketing. And so we just chat about the marketing headlines every week. Uh, we've tried a couple different formats, but mostly it's about, you know, we, we go through the marketing headlines from that week and we give kind of our take and our advice and our perspective on what those headlines are. And yeah, we have both a live audience. People also watch online uh, live. And then all the episodes also get recorded and put into iTunes. So it's about distributing through multiple formats. Yeah, what, what now, and forgive me for this, what Mike is not saying is the way they're packaging it. The con you know, you mentioned that the content's relevant, but the delivery is absolutely phenomenal. There, there's, a, there's a sense of self-deprecation, there's some humor, but there's always a, a key theme. So, so yeah, we, I mean, we try to have fun with it, but we also try to nail, you know, the, the you know, there's both steak and sizzle. We talk about that a lot. So there's some, there's some good content, but you, it's not, it's not dry. We're not reading it line by line off a sheet. Yeah, it, yeah. And this, this is interesting. We, we see obviously here at Pixabilly. I mean, we're a video marketing company, and we see a lot of videos come in, and we're really a lot of our strategy is for, is for coaching folks. You can have great content. And I've been involved in video yeah. for a long, long time. You can have great content, but if you don't package it up right, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't get absorbed. So let's. You know, what's interesting here is, we've obviously, video is content. Yes. And we're a lot of our customers. We're coaching them. They're migrating toward an inbound marketing strategy. Yeah. But there is. But once video is there, there's there's the trepidation. So they move along on inbound a little bit. But yeah. once video comes in. So how do we get these people to jump into the video swimming pool with us? Mark? You know, that's, that's a great question. I, I mean, I think there's some reasons why people are scared of video. I think one part of it that you guys do a lot with to help folks is that people are just, they don't understand the technology, they don't know how to get started, they haven't edited video like that and things like that before. And you guys both have some software that help people manage and distribute the video, but also have a lot of services that will you know, either take video that people have mm -hmm. and edit it and make it more professional or even send a, a crew into their office, right? And say, hey, we'll, we'll take care of all that for you. So I think that's one thing that helps get people started is just making that process easier. I think the second thing is that people are often just um, afraid to be on camera and put themselves out there. And I always encourage people that maybe you can get started by doing something that's maybe just a voiceover with not you on camera, but maybe showing some web screenshots or pictures of your product or, you know, other types of images, you know, and then it's maybe just your voice and that's kind of a baby step to actually like being on camera. Um, so that's, that's something else that sometimes I suggest to folks yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. And two great looking guys like us getting on camera <laughs> is, always, is always an interesting thing. Well, story. I always say that I have a, you know, a face made for, um, for podcasting, audio podcasting, <laughs> and, a, and a voice made for blogging. So <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, hey. really, it can be about the content. Hey, so if we can do it, everybody can. So, exactly. so one, one final question. It's um, obviously HubSpot is, gets a lot of attention. And you guys seem to have fun. You seem to be having a blast. Tell, tell us a bit about. I'm glad we give you that opinion because uh, it's really it's boring. We hate our jobs. No, it's it, we have a lot of fun with it, and I think that uh, the reason why is that we're passionate about what we're doing. And one of the criteria that I always look for, uh, among lots of different criteria, but that I always look for in terms of people that we're hiring, are you know what is what is your passion? Is your passion of something to do with marketing? 
Does it have something to do with inbound marketing? Uh, and so, we'll, I mean, just by naturally doing your job, are you going to be passionate and fun about it? And I think it's the same thing for you guys. You all have involvement with different aspects of video mm -hmm. and at Pixability. It's like, if you're not, you know, the worst thing you can do is try to interview at Pixability and like not have a YouTube channel, never have made a video, and you're just like, well, I don't really care about video. I just want a job here. It's, that's not going to get you hired. So it's really, it's finding people with that passion that I think is really important. Yeah, full disclosure, when I, when I joined uh, Pixability, I actually showed it from my video with an iPad with a video on it. Yeah. yeah and so that, that's the way to do it. Well, and I think your resume that you send into Pixability should be a video resume, right? It's like, of course. Yeah, and that's, that's what separates it. So uh, one final thought, because you, you mentioned passion. Yeah. And I think as marketers, what we're trying to do is we're trying to actually transfer a passion. Hmm. And the reason video is so powerful, there's no better way to, to transfer a passion. Yeah. And, it's, yeah, and I speak with a lot of customers now, and they're passionate about their product you know, flows to run yeah. their videos, and that's going to be key. So, Mike, I want to say thank you for everything. Thanks that's for having me. a great me. chat. Yeah, a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you.